Hey guys, Rick here from the Onside Kick, here to give you my reactions, my thoughts. Usually, me and Mark do these videos together. I was out watching the Hawks game, came home a little late. Weren't able to do it together, so I'm going to get my thoughts out to you guys. My reactions. Oh, it, it feels so good to have the Hawks win the Stanley Cup again. The first thing, the first thing I want to get off my chest is... I am kind of annoyed with ESPN that they're still talking about LeBron James and the big three, even though, you know, the Hawks just won the championship. That's just that's just me being from Chicago and me hating the Miami Heat. But, I mean, looking at this series, not even looking at the Hawks winning and the Bruins losing, this cup, this series, I, tr I thought before – Game six, I thought even after game two, even maybe before game one, that this was going to be the best Stanley Cup that people were going to see for quite some time. Because, I mean, I feel like this playoffs, and maybe it's because I'm a Hawks fan, so I've been tied to the kind of playoff run that the Hawks have had throughout the entire postseason. But I feel like so many people, when you look at the NBA when they had their lockout, the biggest thing was, oh, well, if the Miami Heat win, who cares because it was a lockout season. Nobody was saying that this year in the NHL. I didn't hear one person say, well, it doesn't matter if the Hawks win it because it was a shortened season. In my opinion, with how good these playoffs have been, Boston, their game seven against the Maple Leafs in the first round. The Hawks winning three in a row, coming back from the dead, basically, to beat the Detroit Red Wings to send them off to the Eastern Conference. And then having these two, these two teams meet in the Stanley Cup. Just pure greatness. It was storylines all around, and it ended with the Hawks hoisting their second cup in basically four years and I mean looking at the game six it came down to it came down to I want to say the guy who tied the game the guy who was there in front of the net well it came down to two things first the guy who was there to tie the game in front of the net to take the pass from the captain oh it's on this side from the captain Jonathan Taves and that was Brian Bickle we talked about this entire playoffs how He's had a great run, and Brian Bickle, the kind of unsung hero for the Hawks. And then in a couple podcasts, me and Mark have been talking about, well, in the Stanley Cup Finals, Bickle's kind of disappeared a little bit. Well, he came back. He came back when it counted, and that was to tie the game. And then just 17, happening within 17 seconds of each other, I just remember too. I want to. I want to say it was after the first. The first period after the intermission, they had a little short interview at Coach Q, and I don't know if this is what he said verbatim, but it was along the lines of, "It doesn't have to be pretty." That's what the. In a nutshell, that's what this game was. The Hawks just hung around. They hung around after the first. They should have been. They should have been down more than just one goal after the first period. They had what? I think there was one point where they had four straight back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back penalties with maybe a little time in between, but they had four big penalties against them where they had to do some penalty killing in that first period. Should have been down way more than one goal. They survive. And then they just they hang with it in the second. They tie the game 1-1. Then Lucic. Puts Boston up 2-1. to one, And Boston's, the crowd's feeling it. Okay, this game, it's going back to Chicago. We're going to have a game seven. Then the Bickle goal ties it up. And with about 58 seconds left, my feeling, what I was thinking, was great. We're going to have another, we're going to have another overtime game. I felt like the Hawks were going to win. And I was like, we're going to have another overtime game. And I bet you number 88, Patrick Kane, going to put it in the back of the net to win another cup in overtime. 
and have the game winner on a stick. Then it happened. Bolin, you could say it was the hockey gods saying they wanted the Hawks to win. You could say it was being in the right place at the right time. If you're a Boston fan, you can even say that it was just pure luck. Puck goes to Oduya at the point. Oduya with a great slapper. Tips off of Froelich's stick. Clinks the goalpost. And Bolin puts it in the back of the net. And right there, I kind of, like, I was at... I was hanging out with some friends, and we all looked around just shocked, like, did they just score again? Did they just score again? Really? Again? And then we erupted, because, I mean, with 58 seconds left, I mean, part of me, there was, like, maybe, I'm going to say 25% of me that was, like, we, st <laughs> we, we still got to play some hockey. There's still, there's still some time left here. Boston can basically do what we did, pull the goalie, get the man advantage, and tie this game up, send it to overtime. They are at home, but it never happened, and then we won, and everyone just erupted, and oh, the cup, the cup coming back home to Chicago, From we won it in 2010, win it in 2013 now, it's just such a great feeling, Patrick Kane, the Conn Smite winner, and the only... The only thing I have about Patrick Kane winning the Conn Smite is, uh, I don't know. I kind of feel, uh, part of me wants to give the con like if I was choosing who the Conn Smite was, part of me would give it to Corey Crawford. And the reason being is I do not think, did he have did he have some rough games in the finals? Yes, he did. Corey Crawford had some rough games in the finals. But when when Patrick Kane and I'm pulling up his stats right now in the playoffs, when Patrick Kane wasn't scoring many goals against the Wild and against the Red Wings, he had no goals against the Wild, only had 5 points in that series. And was pointless in the last two games. Then against the Red Wings. He only had two goals. And that was in games two and three. He had an assist in game five. And in the last two games six and seven. No points. And he had a minus one in game seven. Then Patrick Kane comes out. He has the hat trick to win it against the Kings in six. And then in game five and game six. Or Game four and game five of the Stanley Cup. He has a one goal, two point performance in game four in the overtime winner. Then he has a two goal night at the UC in game five. And I feel like, I kind of feel like those four games, the last two against the Kings and the last two against Boston, well, not the last two, game four and game five because game six he didn't score. But I mean, those four games. Of the reason he won the won the con smite is he not deserving of the con smite? I'm not saying that. He's a great player. There's a reason why the Hawks drafted him with a number one overall pick. I just feel like personally, personally, I would give it to Corey Crawford because I mean, Crawford. There's a reason why against the Wings, we won two of those big games, four to one, two to one. Even in the in the zero to two shutout loss that we had to the Wings in Detroit, Crawford played a good game, and I mean, go, Crawford didn't have an easy task. He basically had after I mean the Wild take the Wild out of it because I don't think Backstrom is a like great goalie, but he ran into Jimmy Howard, who was playing phenomenally. At the time we met the Wings in the quarterfinals. Then he runs into, oh, I'm sorry, former Conn Smite winner, Jonathan Quick. And basically outperforms Quick to get to the cup. And then he has to go up against, see, this Boston Hawks series was the exact same thing as the Wings series 
except it wasn't a rival. They were roughing us around. They were rough around jo Jonathan Taves. There was heat. There was more heatedness, I would say, in this series than in the series against the Wings. More yapping, more punches being thrown, more pushes. And I mean, I like that. I like to see that as a hockey fan. But I mean, Corey Crawford had to go up against Tuka Rask, who arguably, up until the Stanley Cup, was the best goaltender in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And basically, Crawford went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him and outwielded him for the Stanley Cup. See, I, that's why I would give Crawford the Stanley Cup. I feel like without Crawford, would Emery have probably done a good job? I want to say yes. If we didn't have Crawford, I would say yes, just because of the season Emery had. But you can't say that. You can't say just because of the season Emery had, he would have done just as good as Crawford in these playoffs. That's why with me... I feel like maybe Crawford has a – you could put up a good a good case to give him the Conn Smythe Trophy over Patrick Kane. But, I mean, Patrick Kane did have the most points for the Chicago Blackhawks, but I want to say 19 points, 9 goals, 10 assists, plus minus of 6 in these playoffs. So, I mean, still a worthy, a worthy MVP, but there's also another choice. It wasn't just – Patrick Kane that won us this cup and I mean looking ahead because obviously I'm in Chicago I'm a Hawks fan the one thing I, I'm looking forward to right away is the offseason I know everyone's in post celebration kind of and we're going to be like this until the parade on Wednesday even afterwards it's going to be just post celebration kind of not hangover but just kind of basking and yeah, you could say kind of like a post celebration hangover, but I mean you got to look at the free agents. I mean Nick Letty's a free agent this off season. Brian Bickle is a free agent this off season. Victor Stahlberg, Michael Hanzus. So I mean there's Ray Emery, our backup goaltender who uh, did a pretty good job. I I would not be surprised if this off season one of the teams. Towards the uh, towards the bottom of the league that might need a starting goaltender tries to uh, sway Emery over with some big money just because of the season he had this year. Would I like to see Emery back as the backup behind Corey Crawford next year? Of course, but that's just my thoughts. I feel like Emery is going to be a key free agent to watch this off season. That's what I think of the Stanley Cup. I mean, ugh, I'm still kind of. I'm in a little bit of shock and awe after that last 17 seconds. I mean, I didn't expect Bolin to score, but it's like Coach Q said, it doesn't have to be pretty. And the, these playoffs, this series, the game-winning goal, it wasn't pretty. So that's that's my thoughts. Ran a little bit longer than I usually run for a video, but as always, Tell me what you think down below. Anything that I talked about, the series in general, Patrick Kane winning the con smite, the offseason that us Hawks fans might be looking forward to, and also anything else down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, because if you sus subscribe and comment on any of our June videos, you will get a chance to win an Anthony Rizzo signed baseball that's going to do it for uh, the chicago blackhawks i'm just going to, going to call it the blackhawks stanley cup winner reaction video here on the onside kick check out our other videos and as always right now it's morning technically kind of night morning so wherever you are good morning good night everybody out there i'll see you guys later